Hi, Sangeeta. Thank Hi. you for joining the call. And uh, uh, so for for rest of you who don't know Sangeeta yet, uh, I know little about Sangeeta. I met her, I think, 10 years ago in, in one of the Toastmaster meeting. Mm -hmm. And in my view, that point in time, she just started exploring this mountaineering thing. And uh, she was just like... Uh, any other working professionals she she and that's why i i could relate to her well because see you find the the people coming from sports background they show the extreme fitness and they do a lot of challenging stuff but when sangeeta did this kind of stuff then i said okay this is a person from from my group and a normal guy like me a normal person like me and doing something differently and uh, i thought okay why don't i invite sangeeta for for the conference and and hear her, her story now, uh, before you go further, Sangeeta, why don't you formally introduce yourself? It's uh, kind of a uh, little difficult, but I'll try. Because uh, I'm Sangeeta Espehel. Uh, I'm 53, and I like to specify that simply because I start with the fact that age is not a barrier to any achievement that you might want to do in life. And keep going. So my life has been a plethora of challenges from starting as an airline crew flying for 15 years, then coming on uh, in between for a little time to do Toastmasters. Then I run my own business in image consulting where we help people, you know, groom themselves, look good. And which is why um, even on mountains, which now I'm a passionate and an avid mountaineer, uh, after many years, I plan to always look good, including putting lipstick on the summit. So what I'd like to say is that I've always felt that there is nothing that one cannot explore or achieve if you have a right mind, a right power of mind. And which is what I have developed over the last few years and which has taken me to plenty of goals and still going. Okay, so what motivated you to do this? Like, it's, it's something, a, a difficult task looks like. You know, uh, Saket, the main thing is I have never thought that uh, this is difficult or this is not difficult. In anything that I've done in life, I've always been an explorer. I'm a real explorer. I like to explore many kind of options before I say, okay, let's just go for it, but I will try it. So when my husband asked me to accompany him to Kilimanjaro to tick off his bucket list uh, at 50, I was nearly 47. And I was uh, really interested to know what it would take. So I said, so what do we have to do? And he said, we will have to train, we will join the gym, and then, you know, we will go. And it's just a trekking peak, very high, but, you know, something that we can do and please come with me. And I have never said no to opportunity. So off I went with him. We joined the gym and we, uh, you know, started training. I got my heart rate down and um, got basically fit. So I prepared for it. And uh, that's how my journey started. And when I summited at nearly 47 and came back with my hands and fingers and toes, everything intact and smiling with my red lipstick that I had on the summit. I knew that I was made for better things. <laughs> so uh, that uh, looks like this particular experience gave you a new direction and then you started exploring it further. Uh, is it? Yes, what happened is uh, it was a new uh, direction for me simply because it was a personal challenge, a challenge and a relationship between you and just the mountain. And there was nobody else who was going to come in between your personal challenge like we do in life. If one sets out to become a CEO of a company, he will have to start at the bottom. So I started at the bottom of training, understanding my body needs, uh, you know, my nutrition needs for the mountaineer. And uh, which is why that I was able to do what I did this year, scale Mount Everest at 53, because it was a series of preparation, trial, errors, disappointments. And uh, this direction has taken, 
you know me to the top of the world basically true 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 so uh, i i remember that last year when there was an earthquake and that so many people were like uh, uh, got stuck and uh, uh, it created a little more fearful environment for for the mountaineers especially who were targeting towards going going on everest so how you how you handled your fear when the news is are breaking here and there and you are you are maybe after some time you are planning to go the same route you know my husband was stuck in that earthquake in he's also a mountaineer he uh, went in 2015 when there was a huge avalanche and the ever space camp was uh, full of deaths and he was stuck high up on camp 2 at that point i was not going in uh, 15 i was going in 16 because it's a long process and it takes two months away from your normal life and when he came back and i looked at him and when you talk of fear i did not see any fear in him and mm-hmm. in many ways he's been a inspiration for me because actually i started the journey with him and i asked him how he felt and he said it was uh, we were safe but we were just plain lucky because they were high above but if i were to tackle fear i would not go for a situation i would see that how how do i face things and i always face things head long if there is something that's fearful in my own life i would like to face it okay so see what what i keep talking to the people and and i i believe that everybody has their own mount everest to conquer it is not that a uh, mount everest alone like every life has their own challenges and i see that many things we end up not able to to progress in our life are linked to with the fear so in you know, a one side a uh, fear help us in 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 survival so we remain safe because we don't try something uh, 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 which which can put us into trouble but that the other side it also blocks us from trying something which can open up something new so uh, uh, and and i i find that many professionals working in a various way of their life uh, struggling with okay when not to be f- fearful and when need to like listen to the fear so that we we remain in 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 the whole a uh, 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 right track so what is your learning so while while going through a, a kind of an extreme challenge what you discovered about fear uh 2017 that was uh, now we are in 19 2017 i attempted everest for the first time and i did not make it to the summit so it, i was 51 days on the mountain and i had to turn around because i was sick and in between there were a lot of incidences where uh fear could have overtaken my life and you know put me down and say you know this is not for me but what how, what i would uh, propose to people is that there is always opportunity to learn in your setbacks so setbacks have been actually my opportunities to grow so when i came back in 2015 i set my mind to limitless and i said if i will stay in the limit i will not be able to explore what i can do further it's only when you get out of your comfort zone do you realize that there is much more potential in you than you can ever imagine so i came back i prepared i persevered and with the passion that i had for climbing the mount everest i did it in 2018 okay so what i'm hearing yeah so people have it uh people have two choices one choice is always to give up and say no no this is not for me the other is i think always people should think that there, there must be some learning in it and take that as an opportunity to learn relearn rethink and plan your strategy again just like you would do in a professional field great so what i'm hearing is that overcoming fear is starting from learning from the failures so you use your failure as a learning opportunities and work on them and and run another experiment and that is how you you find your next level and and take the things uh, forward absolutely. Yeah. absolutely i i also think that people um, should not live in a in a cocoon Mm-hmm. they should be mixing with different kind of people to understand how their lives are running they should be exploring boundaries that they haven't tried before which is why if you would think uh, i was a airline crew i was an air hostess 
I would have never thought as an air hostess where I would fly the passengers and look out of the cockpit and look at mountains down below that one day I'll be able to go and actually climb them because I was used to luxury. But I opened my mind to limitless possibilities. So it was limitless possibilities and I felt I was already on the horizon of the sky and here when the opportunity came for me to start trekking and plan another side of my life, I did so. And this is the same with people. People will go through failures, disappointments. And actually, that is the key to getting success. Success doesn't come in one go. It will come through multiple opportunities. And people should, uh, and these opportunities come very slowly and softly. So you have to take uh, umbrance in them and say, yeah, I'm going to try this. If it works, fine. If it doesn't, I'll try again. And the trial and error has got me where I am, which is why now I also run a mountaineering company to take people up to different mountains. Okay. So what I'm hearing is that to overcome a fear, make friendship with the failure. So start uh, start running and, and, and doing things with the failure. The fear will be taken care of. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Make failure a friend. That fear is over. <laughs> And another thing which which you you uh, brought is that work with diversified uh, kind of of people so that they bring a new perspective uh, uh, in in your thinking. And I have been like talking to the professionals and all. We usually hang around with a similar kind of people and create a similar kind of thoughts, and we never look at at beyond. Uh, and we, we, we many times we start feeling the other people are stupid, like uh, they don't understand and my word, and we like discard their thinking. So what I'm hearing from you is that as a professional, I need to be open to talk to other community, which may look stupid to me, but they may have their own word, and and that can uh, uh, open up a, a new horizon for me. Okay, how this whole thing changed your professional life, like. <clears throat> And like I said, I was an airline crew, then I got into image consultancy. And here, when I talk of diversified groups, I work with corporates, I work with beauty pageants, because one, um, what I think over 30 years back, I was Miss India finalist, and I did not make it then. But by the time I thought I will do it again, it was kind of late, the age barrier was over uh, for, uh, you know, for becoming Miss India's, there was a time. But then I realized that, that I had had what I had in me and what it didn't, I did not get when I was uh, trying for Miss India. So I decided to learn and get the new Miss Indias to get those, uh, you know, various skills to get to that point, which will uh, make you reach a plateau and uh, scale their own little Everest. And Another thing which I want to really specify is that you have to be passionate about things. If you're passionate about things, you'll find ways, you'll find people that are uh, resonating with your thoughts. And then it's easier, which is why I talk of diversified groups. And how my life changed it, uh, simply from people who were CEOs, who, I was, uh, who I'm consulting still, you know, they come for the coaching. And then to work with groups. I, I realized that in mountaineering also people were very open to learning because there you are like in the open, out of your comfort zone. And I learned a lot in that. And now I apply that to the corporates to tell them that there are various factors which will enhance your own growth in whatever field that you are. Okay. So what I'm hearing is that this experience is, is uh, uh, made you experiment about motivation, experiment about challenging your limit. And now in, in your professional life, also you are sharing this knowledge and helping others to challenge their limits in their Absolutely. own uh, way, way of life. And, and they may learn something from it. Okay. So what are you planning for this Hyderabad conference? Is there any uh, uh, thing in your mind that you are planning to present to us? Uh, I won't give you all the details, but they, I'll be working on basically uh, enhancing your passion that you have in life, the preparation that you will go through, and basically perseverance. Because these three P's are going to get you where you are. And there'll be many stories that I'll be telling you about Mount Everest. You'll be actually seeing me on the summit. You'll see me in various other uh, forms as well. And I, I would really like to... Um, you know, inspire you to follow your dreams. 
Thank you, Sangeeta. It was nice talking to you. Thank you. Thank you.